Speedy Junkie. Welcome to my channel. Today we are getting into Diptyque's Le Grand Tour collection. This is a limited edition collection for 2021 and I'm so excited to share the details of this collection which is quickly selling out. I know most of the products on Diptyque's website are sold out. Um, I have three of the items in this collection. I'm obviously really pumped to share my thoughts on these amazing scents candles, fragrances. I was lucky enough to go to a Diptyque store to smell these before, a day before the release. I was in, I was in New York City, Madison Avenue store. Really awesome experience. I've actually never been inside a Diptyque store before, so it was very magical. Um, they kind of gave me a tour of the whole store, which is, was very cute. I was like one of two customers in there, and you know, I smelled all kinds of things, was interested in a few fragrances, but they showed me kind of a preview of this collection and I was kind of blown away by a couple of things. So I ended up picking up a lot <laughs> from this collection. So let's get into the details. First of all, there are five main products that you can pick up online from this collection. There are some limited edition decorative items that you can pick up in store only. I didn't see those when I was there in store, I think, because I was a little bit early. If you look on Selfridge's website, you can see the things that are there they are offering in store. They have some plates and candle holders that look very cute, um, but I won't be picking up anything more from this collection. But just wanted to shout that out. And also, if you're wondering where can I get this stuff, Diptyque sold out for the most part. Try going to a Diptyque store near you if you can, especially because these are scents. You probably, you're going to be spending a lot of money on them. If you can, it's always best to smell them in person. But if you can't get to a store, I'll, hopefully this video will kind of give you an idea if you like it or not. Also... There are several websites that still have most of this collection in stock if you guys are worried about that. So Diptyque does have one of product from this collection left, the Scented Oval. Selfridges has three items. Nordstrom has three. Saks Fifth Avenue has three items. Netta Porter has all five products. Neiman Marcus has all five products. This is as of Labor Day, Monday, September 6th. And then Space NK has the Paris candle. So let's get into what's in this Le Grand Tour collection and what is this collection about. First of all, it is Diptyque's 60th anniversary this year. 1961 is when they were created. I did get this bag from the Madison Avenue store. I think it's kind of cool to have the 60 design. Um, I also got a gift with purchase, a little mini Bayes candle, and it has the special 60 packaging on the box, but also on this little freebie candle here. So it has that special packaging. Um, if you do buy anything on store or on Diptyque's website, they usually have offers, but... I think it depends what you buy, so definitely ask when you're in the store, hey, do you have any gifts or purchase? But along with the 60th anniversary, they have this Le Grand Tour collection, limited edition collection for this year, and this collection is in connection with the 60th birthday. So I'm going to be reading a little bit because I don't, I'm not like, I, I don't work for Diptyque, <laughs> just in case you guys were curious. So I'll be reading a few notes from their website. So this is basically a tour of different five different cities and with unique scents attached to each one. Bit of history behind Le Grand Tour. For centuries, artists traveled the world on a long journey of cultural initiation called the Grand Tour. Diptyque's roots echo this tradition from the very beginning. The founders of the Maison took inspiration from all they discovered on their travels. Diptyque now revives the spirit of the Grand Tour with an exclusive collection where every creation tells the story of a stopover along 
a journey that stretches across Europe, Asia, and the Middle East. The tour actually goes in a specific order, so we're going to go through the tour in the correct order. So those cities are Paris, Venice, Millais in Greece, Kyoto from Japan, and the last stop is Byblos in Lebanon. Let's start with the first stop on the tour, which is the Paris Scented Candle. Paris and its left bank where Diptyque's story began. The stopover is illustrated in a candle that has been conceived as a Parisian stroll. We walk along the sign, it's which the street is lined with weaving willows, chestnut trees, there's antique shops, and old books found in a bookseller's stand. At the heart of the composition, notes of polished wood, spicy vanilla accents of weathered books, paving stones, evoke this Parisian atmosphere where art meets history. This candle has a lid of sculpted black wood inspired by the design of old diptyque candle stands. On the label, a compass rose symbolizes the starting point of diptyque's grand tour. It's inspired by the compass rose carved on the forecourt of Notre Dame to mark kilometer zero, the point from which every road in France starts. Oh, interesting. So this is a woody candle I am about to show you. It's in the background right there, burning. So with this Paris candle, there's essence of myrrh, old books accord, wood patina accord, and Paris stone accord. So there has been other candles called Paris before. Last year, there was a limited edition Paris candle. I'm not sure the scent of that. I was late to the game getting it. I didn't end up getting it. I do have a Paris City candle, which I haven't burned yet. It's this blue one back here, dark blue and copper. Um, I haven't burned it, but this is more of a, like a floral chipra scent. Um, and I thought, oh, well, this might be the same as the one I already have. It is not. This Paris one is woody, not really floral. So I'm going to blow it out. I'm going to smell it as it's burning and then blow it out cold. The cold scent on this is like a light fresh wood. And let's see, this, if you're curious, this is the lid. The other lid I have on this city candle is metal. I thought this might be metal, but it's actually made of wood. And what's funny about it is when it's on the candle, I'll show you guys, this is the bottom. It reminds me of a like coffee lid, like if you get a to-go coffee, it kind of looks like that to me. Um, but very nice that it comes with a lid. It, it's not something that comes with every dip tea candle. If you're wondering the price of this candle, this is their standard size candle. It's $105, so that makes sense that you get a lid with it because it does cost a little bit more. This is a 190 gram candle. And this is the only size that this particular scent comes in. So I'm going to slowly kind of describe the scent for you. So this is my first burn. Um, I wanted to get this video out as quickly as possible because it's selling out. I do like the cold throw, th the cold throw. But it's definitely more impressive when it's burning, so I'm glad I ended up starting the burn with you guys. Just gonna kind of put my nose up to this without burning myself. I do get the old library book, or old book pages kind of scent. It's definitely not what I expected for a Paris candle. I always think floral fragrances when I think of Paris. And from the things that they've come out before, it's definitely woody, very woody. Um, I, I enjoy this. I think it's actually perfect that we're heading into the fall months. I think a lot of people are really going to enjoy the sort of traditional candle because it's going to tradition it's, I think it's going to be a perfect transition candle as we go into this new season right before the holidays 
it's really nice. Um, it's not like super smoky or anything like that. It's not the photo bois candle at all, but it's definitely a wood vibe. I'm happy to get a limited edition candle because they're so valuable <laughs> with diptyque. They sell out so quickly. Um, I think though, so I smelled this in the store and it wasn't something I was going to buy, but I wanted to do this video. I was like, you know what? It's limited edition. I should just get it. But I think if it wasn't in this really great sort of greenish glass packaging, almost a brown green, um, I probably wouldn't have picked up this scent just because it's not, it's a, a great home scent, but it's not like super exciting or impressive, if you know what I mean. It's nice, but it's not like, oh my goodness, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's woody, but there's, n it's not like super unique to me. I do kind of get that fall because there's a little bit of chestnut, it seems like, in there or something. That you get that sort of comfort feeling from. Yeah, it's an, it's an interesting candle. I think it's an interesting scent that they chose. I'm gonna go ahead and blow this out so I can show you up close the packaging that they're talking about. Look at that. And then on the back it's plain. There is no label. I'm trying to be really careful, but it's super pretty. Last year they had like a very pink floral all the way around. But this is still very simple, very clean, just a colored glass. And then I'll show you what it looks like with the cap. It's good to have a cap. It locks in the scent, especially if you just have candles just sitting out, waiting to be burned. It kind of keeps that scent fresher for longer. But to me, this looks like a little mini coffee with this lid on. Very cute. I like it. I think it's a beautiful decorative candle. I'm gonna put that up to the side now. But again, um, if it wasn't in that limited edition packaging, it's not a scent I would probably pick up otherwise. All right, moving on to our next stop on the tour. This is the Venice set of three travel size Eau de Toilette 7.5 milliliters. I did not pick this up. I did smell it in the store. It, I think it was very green and tomato-y, if I remember correctly. I do enjoy a tomato scent but probably not something I want in a fragrance. I'll show you a picture of what this looks like. Um, I am i don't know why they come up with scent in these sort of travel size only. Like, I'm not sure why they didn't end up putting this out in a larger size. It is a Eau de Toilette. This is also a woody family fragrance. The second stop over on the journey is Venice, the city's Diptyque's founders and new well. Travelers with a passion for art and culture, they visited and stayed there on several occasions. A place well known for those familiar with La Serenissima. Seren it's an island nicknamed the Vegetable Garden of Venice. Here, gently swept by the winds of the lagoon, nature thrives in abundance. In the morning, a scent of damp earth rises to mingle with the bright vegetal notes of vegetables and herbs. In this composition, mandarin and the green aromatic notes of bell pepper, basil, and tomato evoke these unspoiled moments. That's right. I was remembering correctly that this one smelled like tomato. I have a candle that smells like tomato. I love it. But again, not something that I really want to wear. But I totally understand the appeal of this fragrance. If you're into those green vegetable sort of scents, this is like perfect. Um, so the Venice Eau de Toilette comes in a set of three travel size bottles. So if, I guess with this collection, it's a grand tour, if you're traveling along with the story, travel size bottle makes sense. It comes with a cotton pouch illustrated with a historical diptyque pattern. Each fragrance purchase comes with a matching sample so you can try the scent before you open the full size bottle and they accept returns within 28 days of the original purchase free of charge. So the set of three travel size is $95, and you don't quite get 10 mils in each bottle, you get 7.5, so not like a huge amount of product for $95, but it, if you just kind of want to have a little bit of fragrance, you don't want a whole bottle, this is an excellent way to introduce yourself to Diptyque's fragrances. So this one it has notes of basil, green pepper, and vetiver, and the olfactory <laughs> accident they say is tomato. To me, I smell a lot of tomato, which 
is very, very nice, very fresh. All right, on to our third step. This is the Miller's Scented Oval, another product I didn't end up picking up. I thought it was a very beautiful oval. I saw it in person. I, you know, the little tassel is very cute. I've actually never bought an oval before, scented oval before. And I think it's just something you hang <laughs> somewhere. I don't quite get how it works. It looks very pretty and just very luxe. So let's go ahead and read a little bit more about the Millets in Greece. I'm not saying that right, of course. So the third stop over on the journey is in Millets. The Diptyque founders used to rent a house there in the summer. This village nestled at the foot of Mount Pelion, and to reach it, one had to follow the mountain paths. The scented oval retraces in scents the roads that reach from the coast up to Pelion. The spicy, the spicy scent of Immortelle mings, mingles with the cool Mediterranean wind before warming up next to the sun-drenched fig trees. In this composition, the warm, cool melange of spicy and woody aromatic notes evokes the contrast and richness of this journey to the heart. Of Greece. The pearls on the scented oval are inspired by a necklace designed by Christine Gertraut, 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 while accompanying pom pom burrows elements of Greek, Greek craftsmanship. Immortel is yarrow to me, which is a very herbal flower. It has ambroxan and fig. I do really like fig. I don't really remember what this smells like, to be honest, um, from smelling it in the store, unfortunately. All right, just like I thought, the scented ovals are just, give out their perfume through cold. Just sitting out. You don't have to light them or do anything. Just cold diffusion is how their scent gets dispersed. And it's for small spaces, so it's not going to be super strong. So if you have a closet that you want to scent, or maybe like a wardrobe or a chest that you want your clothes to smell good. These are just kind of suggestions off the top of my head. Not really meant for a car. They have um, car scents if you want something like that. So this is like its own little special thing. And this one I believe is the least expensive out of the whole collection. This is $70. I'm not really sure that there's like a size to these, but they're like about this big. If you can compare that to my face. They're somewhat sizable, and they're really beautiful. So if you like want to display them, have it be part of your decor, they're really pretty. On to a very exciting stop in this tour. This, the fourth stopper, stopover on this journey is Kyoto. The Japanese aesthetic has often inspired the Maison with its refinement and poetry. For this Uda toilette, the focus is on Ikebana, an art that describes the way of flowers and that shapes nature according to ancestral codes. The first school of Ikebana was formed in Kyoto in the 15th century. This old factory composition has been conceived according to three symbolic pillars of the art. The rose represents that of man, the beetroot, the beetroot vetiver duo evokes that of earth and incense that of heaven. A woody floral creation with the refined grace of an ikebana arrangement of roses and branches. Presented in the Furoshiki tradition, the bottle is wrapped in a fabric printed with the Sarayi pattern created by Dipti's founders. Okay, so this fragrance is a Uda Toilette, 100 milliliters. $190 if you get it on Diptyque's website. Notes in here are incense, Turkish rose, vetiver, the olfactory accident is beetroot accord. So when I was in store on Madison Avenue, this is the product that I wanted to get out of everything. But I also really like the candle that I'm about to talk about. Um, and I think I had the most defining, most noticeable reaction to the candle. So when I told them I wanted Kiana, she's like, she actually gave me the other candle, which is fine. The candle isn't something I probably would have bought. I ended up ordering the fragrance later once I realized she gave me the wrong thing once I got home. No big deal. But here is the amazing looking fragrance. I've never had a Diptyque fragrance before. I had many samples. They're all really nice. And I tried a bunch of samples in the store. I got a bunch of little cards. So if you ever go in the store, I actually have little scent cards for each fragrance. 
especially their core collection. I was about to get Umoeli, super pretty. Um, but when I smelled Kyoto, like I smelled all of these different ones she showed me. I was really impressed with Kyoto because there's just such a different fragrance for me. And look at this bottle. It's red. I don't think they've ever done a red glass bottle before. Just super pretty. It has this beautiful design. And then the this is the little fabric scarf thing. It's not really a scarf. It's pretty small. It's made especially for this little bottle and it came to wrapped in this. And I'll go ahead and put those pictures up of what it looks like all wrapped up. But this is really beautiful. It's not like it's super soft or anything like that. It's just mostly for looks. I think I will iron this out and display it somehow because it's just really nice. This is the box that it came in, Kyoto. Really, really pretty. And it was just like nestled in here. This is the back of the box. Just super nice, not a box I will ever throw away. It was really nice and sturdy. While we're talking about boxes, this is the Paris box that it came in. The Paris candle. Definitely a different type of box than Dor Diptyque usually uses. It's very sturdy. Have the space for the lid and the candle there. Really nice. So that is the Paris box. And back to this wonderful Kyoto fragrance. I mean, besides like the packaging, it also just smells like really, really lovely and so different for me. So the, the notes of this... It says it's in the floral family. I sprayed it a little bit ago, but it's got a lot of woods in it and incense and just perfect richness without being overwhelming in any one direction. I just really fell in love and the fact that it's limited edition, I'm like, I better pick this up. So like the next day I ordered it online while I was still on, vac on vacation and had it sent here. It took a little while. I almost smell like tea with this one, and I know there's not tea notes in it, but you just get this kind of herbal, woody, floral freshness. Again, a perfect transitioning sort of fragrance as we get into a new season. It's not like super dark and heavy and deep, but it's a little bit deeper than a normal like summer light fragrance. It's really nice and just a diversion from like the heavy white florals I've been wearing. It's just perfectly well done, like super pretty. I think this is going to be a crowd pleaser for a lot of people because it's not super woody, it's not super floral, it like has a nice balance right in the middle medium. Now if you really like strong fragrances that are, you know, mostly floral or mostly woody, you, you know, you may not appreciate this as much because of the blend, but I really like the blend. I kind of just get a green tea incense vibe that just smells so good. <laughs> I definitely recommend Kyoto, but if you are in store, if you do have a store near you, I do recommend sniffing this one out. I don't know that you're going to be able to get samples of it, unfortunately, because it is limited edition. As I said, if you don't have a Diptyque store near you, there are a number of stores that might be near you instead that you could perhaps check out. Um, Selfridges, Nordstrom, Saks, Net-A-Porte, Nima Marcus, Space NK, any of those. You know, you could call them, you could call the location, like, hey, do you have this fragrance in stock? I want to stop by and smell it. That would be a great idea for you guys. I definitely recommend it. Top, top choice out of this whole collection is Kyoto. As I said, $190, the most expensive product out of this collection. So compared to other Oud de Toilettes in the Dipti collection, $190 is a little bit high. Um, I think you can get... 
the Ouda perfumes for this price or maybe a little bit more. I'm not really sure, but usually the Ouda toilettes for this size are less expensive. So you're kind of paying a premium with Kyoto, limited edition. You're paying that extra price for this particular scent, Ouda Toilette. Just want to make that clear in case you guys are wondering, well, how does this compare with other diptyque scents in terms of price? Is it worth it? Totally up to you. I think if you like the smell, you're going to get it. If you don't, you don't. But, you know, because it's kind of that limited edition premium, it's a little bit more. But you do get the pretty red bottle. At least you get something different from it, right? All right, moving on to the last stop in the tour. The fifth and final stop over on our journey is Byblos. Diptyque's founders stayed there when they traveled through Lebanon. Small cafes line the alleys of the old Souk at the thousand-year-old port. The strong coffee is served. Its aroma mingling with the scent of each stall's ancient woodwork. Not far from this ancient ancient Phoenician port where cargoes of spices and precious wood were once unloaded. At the heart of the composition, an enveloping accord of roasted coffee is accentuated by the liveliness of fresh cardamom and atlas cedar. The succession of sensations and old factory impressions that illustrate the atmosphere of a city with a fascinating historical and artistic legacy. This candle comes in a marbled clay vessel inspired by whisk by wisps of coffee smoke. The notes in here are coffee, atlas cedar, and white musks. This is an expensive candle for sure, but it is a very special vessel that it comes in. It is marbled clay. It is $165, but it is a larger candle at 300 grams. The Paris one is 190 for comparison. Um, initially I wasn't going to pick it up, but I definitely love the scent in the store, so I think that's why she gave it to me. That's why she sold it to me. She thought I really wanted this, not Kyoto, even though I said Kyoto. Anyways, no big whoop. I loved it. I put it in my suitcase. It arrived safely. Now that I'm burning it, its projection is major. It's really strong, much better at projecting in my opinion, than the Paris candle, but it is larger. I feel like, in my experience, Diptyque, the larger the candle, the bigger the projection, it just does a better job of getting out in the room. I think that's probably true for a lot of brands, but I'm really glad I picked this up because it is kind of that smoky coffee scent, perfect for fall time. And it is right here burning, and you definitely get that roasted coffee vibe, but it's not like overwhelming coffee. You get a little bit of that spicy cardamom as well, which is so pretty. Very like that, you know, the, the baking spices with the cardamom. It's definitely not like pumpkin spice or anything like that, but it's a sophisticated fall coffee spice candle way better than any pumpkin spice scent you're gonna get and you get it in this beautiful marbled clay vessel and the design goes all the way around I'm gonna go ahead and blow this out mmm oh. it does smell like something wonderful you're about to drink it kind of, the cardamom I think has like the coffee and chai scent. It's beautiful. Um, so I wasn't going to get this because of the cost. This is what I got. This is what she gave me in my bag. I didn't realize until I got home, but no regrets. No regrets. Uh, it's super good. When, obviously a favorite from the collection. I would probably put this, the scent is probably in first place. The fact that it's a candle, I mean, it's going to not last me as long as the fragrance. So I put the fragrance in the top spot for my recommendation, but this candle is like a close second. If you prefer candles, I would recommend the, the Byblos over the Paris Limited Edition, just in terms of unique scents. It's pretty great. never smelled anything like this in a candle before. But for a candle, it's super high-end, super luxury, so... It is $165. All right, one thing I forgot to mention, the Byblos does not come with a lid. Even though it's $165, no lid. 
kind of disappointing, but um, they, I believe, did take cells lids. I'm not sure if they have one that fits the 300 gram candle. They also have those glass, like, cloche that you just kind of set over the candle. That's supposed to, like, prolong the scent. Um, so if you want, like, your candles to really last and you're spending a lot of money on candles, you can get one of those. I personally don't have one just because, I don't know, I'm afraid to order glass online. And I'm not excited to go to a store just to pick that up, so... I don't have them, but if you really want to make your candles last, consider picking up a lid for those. This is the Bibleist box. So make sure you get the right thing when you go home. Just because I think maybe the people working there kind of get confused because they have the other parts of the collection on the side, but the, what is at the front, the largest, is what you're actually getting in here. And, yeah, it does have, like, all this candle information on the bottom. So just make sure you get the right one when you're leaving the store. Mmm, that smells so good. I say it smells more like chai tea, like that milk and chai flavor. Not like chai tea latte, like the American, but like actual chai tea from, like, an Indian restaurant, if you've ever had it. It's very different than what you get at Starbucks. Um, this smells like that, that cardamom. It's so good. It's so good. I mean, even if you're not into candles, this is a beautiful gift. You know someone that likes chai. This is amazing. And so pretty. I mean, this is decoration for sure. That is it for the tour. I do want to go through a couple of freebies I got in the store that I did not... That I don't think I maybe would have got with an online order, especially if it's not through Diptyque. And there are a couple things I know I wouldn't have gotten if I didn't go to the store. So I just want to go through those really quickly. With the Bibleos purchase in store at the Madison Avenue Diptyque store, I got a matches box, which I've never seen before. Or nothing, none of. This never came with any online orders I've made in the past. So you get a bunch of long matches, which is cool. I got, as I showed you guys, a little Bay's 60 travel size candle. I'm not like a huge... Bay's smells very floral to me, and... It's not like the most exciting scent to me. I know it's like their top seller, I think. And I'm not like a huge fan of these little ones just because I feel like they're too small. <laughs> and um, for how expensive they are, they're really small. Um, if you really want to get a sense of a candle, and just get the larger one. Get the 190 gram one. Just, I don't know. I mean, if you've never tried to take, you get a sense of a smell with these, but the projection isn't great. They're tiny. They're a lot of money for a votive. Anyways, I like the limited edition packaging. I was pretty excited to get a little free candle, of course. Who isn't? But the most exciting thing I got with my purchase is these little Lauderie jellies. I got three boxes of these. I already ate one. I've been keeping them in the fridge, so they look a little bit wet. But this is a macaroon store in... Paris mostly, but they have one I saw in New York, and for some reason they were giving these out at the Diptyque on Madison Avenue. So they're just like four little jellies. I'm not sure, sure what they're doing at every Diptyque store if they're giving out little goodies like this with purchase, but this was awesome. Totally appreciate little free candies, especially from Lottery. I've never even been to one. Um, they usually have long lines especially in Paris. I don't know. That was the gift of a purchase I got. I appreciate gift of purchase very much. Very happy with my experience at that store. I actually, when you go into a fragrance store, it can be a really memorable experience. Every time I go into a fragrance store, I feel like I always feel special when I leave and that's why I love fragrance. And even though I haven't been to a lot of stores because of the pandemic, um, going and traveling and picking something up from New York was really special and it's I'll never forget this trip just because of the experience that I had at Diptyque 
And, you know, the other perfume stores that I stopped by, it was very fun. I definitely would have not have made these purchases if I didn't get a chance to smell these in the store. But overall, you know, I went, we went through the tour. I think, you know, my top two picks are Kyoto and Vibelos. While I enjoy the look of this, I didn't really remember smelling it in the store, but I do like the packaging of it. That's mostly why I picked it up. It's very woody, not super exciting. It smells good though. I mean, you can't go wrong with a dip tea candle. All right, a couple of candle tips before I leave you. If you're going to purchase anything from any expensive candle line, just want to remind you of a couple tips. So I'm not the greatest example today because I'm just kind of testing for you guys. But when you get a new candle, you want to make sure every time you burn, really, you want to melt the wax all the way to the edge. That's going to prevent tunneling. I didn't do that today. So I'm probably going to get a tunnel down because I didn't burn it all. I'll try to burn it right now so that doesn't happen. Um, but another thing, if you're burning for a couple of hours, you don't want to like burn for like eight hours straight or anything like that. You want to read the directions. Usually it's like a couple hours for like maybe the first burn and then you want to blow it out. And then next burn is maybe three hours. You just really want to like not go overboard with how long you burn these candles. Also, anytime you burn, you want to trim your wick. I have a Diptyque wick trimmer. Any brand will work. This is much better than scissors, which will likely dig into the wax when you're trying to cut a wick. So something like this is perfect. You want to trim them. Trimming your wax prevents like huge flames, tunneling. It just helps prolong your very expensive candle. Also, when you blow out your flame, you want to use a candle snuffer. This one is also from Diptyque. And you just kind of want to do this, smother the flame. Blowing it out can kind of move the wick around when you, sorry, move the wax around. So when you're moving wax around, that kind of messes with how it's going to burn because you displaced it. Anyways, those are a couple tips. Also, if you don't like matches, you have a hard time with matches. Sometimes it takes me like 20 times to light a match. I have a chargeable electronic lighter. This is from Amazon called RONXS. It has a little place where you can charge it with any charger that already exists. It comes with one. And you press this button here after you slide this. And you can see that's how you get your little flame better than a uh, refillable. It's so much better than any other like reusable. This is like the best way to have a reusable flame. You just got to make sure it's charged. When it gets low, it gets down to one. I find this so much better than any other sort of than any other lighter we have like. That you're, I feel like I'm always running out of these. Um, while it's nice to have the really long stem, it feels like you're always out of juice. So I like having a rechargeable lighter like this. It's super awesome. So those are my recommendations, little tips there. Just want to make sure you're leaving your candle within sight. Um, if you have kids, dogs, pets, if you have like a huge air conditioning blast, um, you want to be careful if there's an earthquake or some sort of thing happening and things are falling down, you have a candle burning, you just want to go run over and blow it out. That actually happened to me recently. There was a small earthquake. First thing I went to is my candle and blew it out just in case because I was sitting right in front of a TV. The TV toppled over, fire started, right? So just want to be really careful with candles when you're burning them. Be really safe can't be overly cautious with the candle. Um, also, I want to talk about Diptyque a little bit. Diptyque is a luxury candle fragrance brand. Um, it's definitely not necessary that you have these in your life, but I will caution you once you start getting into these candles, it becomes super addicting. I will say, if you want to know what kind of wax are in these candles, I believe they are all paraffin. And I want to let you know a little bit about paraffin. If 
to help make and hopefully that will help inform you of what kind of candle purchases you want to make in the future. Paraffin is not known to be great for you. I don't know what kind of paraffin they use. I, I don't know how much information Diptyque shares, but that is what I know. Paraffin is like an old school wax that I think holds fragrance really well and projects fragrance really well, and I think that's why they use it. Health-wise, you know, burning can paraffin candles regularly, breathing that in, not the healthiest for you. Diptyque is really beautiful, very decorative. You don't have to burn the candles, but to get the most out of them, that's what you want to do. What I recommend is to try one out. Don't burn it hours on end. Kind of leave these for special occasion. Burn them every once in a while, but burning them day in, day out for years, not great for your lungs. Just going to put that out there. Um, if you want, like, to have candles burning regularly at home, try something a little bit more natural, a vegetable, a soy wax, beeswax. Those are a bit cleaner burning and better for you to breathe in. Um, there's a lot of ideas of what kind of waxes we, we should be using. Probably none at all, right? Uh, but just want to put that out there. Keep, do your research. Keep yourself informed. Um, you know, I haven't had any health issues, but I'm in my 30s. I don't have asthma or anything like that. I don't have lung problems otherwise. Um, if I did, I'd be a little bit cautious. Um, but again, I'm not burning diptyque day in and day out. A lot of what I have is for decorative purposes. But, you know, I just wanted to put that information out there in case you're curious about what kind of wax is in here. If you prefer not to have paraffin, then you probably want to, um, go with another brand than diptyque. All right, guys, that is the Le Grand Tour. We are finished. I'm impressed with this collection. Um, I like the variety of products and price points that they offer in different scents. Um, just so you guys know, anytime any limited edition product comes out with the Diptyque, they go rather quickly. So you don't want to be on the fence too long if you're thinking about a product. Um, if you guys have any questions about what I've gone through, please comment below. If you like this video, click the thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye, guys.